Hey everyone, good evening. It's so good to have you join us tonight for our Wednesday night. Um, we're just excited about what God's doing in our church. It's so exciting to be back together on Sunday. If you were able to worship with us, I pray that it was just a great experience to be with one another and, and worship the Lord and just exalt Him a little bit together. If you missed last Wednesday, uh, hopefully you saw what we posted up on Facebook and our YouTube channel. So our video is there so you can check out the message and we really hope that you're going to join us uh, this Sunday for worship here as well at 1030. If you've got a Bible, turn over to Acts chapter 14. If you've been with us many of our Wednesdays. You've been with us moving through the book of Acts. We've been taking some lessons looking at really just how the early church addressed and dealt with some of the challenges that they faced because we are a church that is facing challenges. We are living in a church age that is facing challenges. And so we're looking to the early church to get some wisdom and direction for our lives. And uh, here we are in Acts chapter 14. If you're there, go to verse 21. We're just gonna read two verses tonight, 21 and 22. And it says this, we've been following Paul and Barnabas. They are on their first missionary journey. And it says, they preach the good news in that city. They're in Derby right now and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Tonight I want to talk to you about uh, just what you needed to hear. So why don't we open up in prayer and we're going to get started. Father, we're thankful for our time together. Lord, just make it beneficial. Strengthen us, speak into us, encourage us. God, direct us tonight. We pray that you would just help us to see where you're leading us, the things that you're doing in our lives right now that are shaping us for the things that you have for us in the days ahead, the months, the years ahead. 
Lord, we want to be people of vision. Help us to dream uh, big dreams. And we pray, Lord, that you would just move in us tonight. Help us to hear your word and make it practical in our lives. And all this we pray in your name. Amen. You know, there's been a lot of times in my life when I was told what I needed to hear. And, and what I needed to hear wasn't necessarily what I wanted to hear, but I needed it. And usually, I'll say usually I heeded that instruction. Usually I, I listened to it and I did what it, it said I was told to do because it was good wisdom. And it changed me. It, it changed my life. It, it changed the, the course of my life. It was exactly what I needed to hear. Maybe for your life, you got some good news today. Maybe you, against the backdrop of all the bad news that we've been hearing and listening to and been inundated with, maybe you, you got some good news and it was just what you needed to hear. Because we're living in desperate times. You know, we are living in a time and a day and age where there's just a huge uptick of prophetic things going on during 2020. And it's not that it all of a sudden surged upon us. There's just been a lot going on. There's a lot of things happening in the world today that just feed into the biblical narrative of what we would expect to see in the last days. And it's like the earth is reeling on its axis and just taking its inhabitants for a ride. The level of despair and hopelessness in the world today, uh, the levels of fear that people have about the future and tomorrow, the confusion that people have in the day and age that we're living in, maybe the anger and the hatred that we see that's so prevalent even in our own country and other countries around the world, it's, it's escalating. It just appears that 2 Timothy 3 is becoming the populist norm of what Paul wrote to Timothy about what we should expect in humanity in the last days. And when I look at all of that, I'm sometimes amazed at how many so-called believers are content to sit on the sidelines. That we can be so content to not engage our culture, not engage our neighbors with the truth by living the truth in front of them, by having conversations, even within our communities or with our coworkers or even just with one another as believers with the message everyone needs to hear because this is the message it's a it's a timely message and it's it wasn't just timely for ancient days paul's day it's timely for today and it's the only message it's the only message that people really need to hear that will bring real solutions to their lives to change their life and really just to change the course of anyone who accepts our message in jesus christ there is power in the message. You believe that? I believe it. There's power in the message of Jesus Christ. And so I want to confront you with a question this evening. As a believer, ask yourself, what is the purpose of your life? Why as a believer do you exist? Why are you saved? What is the purpose for your life? It's time for our lives and our lips to direct people to the truth because people need the truth. The Bible tells us that the truth will set us free. We need to relate the truth. Paul and Barnabas right now are in Derby, and they're telling people what they wanna hear. No, they're not telling people what they wanna hear. They're telling everybody in, in the bad times, the sun will come out tomorrow. Nope, they're not, not giving people false hopes and just talking about, well, you know, today will be, tomorrow will be better. And, and we know that mentality because many times at the end of the year, we always look to the next year as like, this is going to be a, it's going to be a great year. It's going to be an awesome year. We're going to, we're going to make headway on certain things. We're going to grow. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. No, they weren't giving people superficial promises about tomorrow being better than what they face today. They are preaching the good news. And good news is not, hey, I got a raise. Good news is not the riots are over and everybody finally decided to just go home. It, the good news is not everything is going my way today. This type of good news is only temporary. It, it's good news just for a time, for a moment. I mean, getting a raise is great until you've got to pay new taxes or you get put into a, a new tax bracket where you're actually making less money than before your raise. So, Good news is very temporary in this life. The effects of it are short-lived. The good news in Christ, that's eternal. That changes somebody. That changes somebody's living. That changes somebody's being. That changes somebody to the very core of who they are. That has a, a, a way of changing the heart of someone. 
See, the lost lives around you don't need false promises, and they don't need false hopes, and they don't need temporary solutions to lifelong problems. They need a message of hope that gets beyond this life. People need to know that what they're looking for will not be found or even be fulfilled in this life. We have to be confronted with that ourselves. It is not going to be found in this life. So as God's people, what happens is we have an obligation now to minister a lasting hope to hopeless lives. Not to have pat answers, not to have easy answers, but to minister a lasting hope to people's lives. And that's only found in Christ. People don't need real world solutions to life's issues. They need real eternal solutions which go beyond today. Because when you, fade, when you find an eternal solution, an eternal solution has the ability to change where you are today, change the reality of what you're facing today. When God is with you, it completely changes the things that you face. And so when you find an eternal solution, when you have an eternal goal, you stop looking for things that can only be found in eternity. You stop looking for them here and trying to be satisfied with them here and find that your satisfaction will be there. Surely we find satisfaction right now in Christ, but there's things that I hope for. There's things that I believe for, that I want, I long for that will not be found today. That might be short-lived, I might find them in spurts, but there's some things that can only be found in eternity. People need eternal solutions to real world problems. See, when we look at the church for ourselves, we don't need to win people over with programs. And I'm not gonna give a, a long talk that programs are evil, but because we can have a program for everything. We know in our own church, we have programs. We have things that we, we do, that we believe in wholeheartedly, but the power is not in a program. Sometimes churches hide behind excellence. They wanna do everything in excellence. And I'm, I believe in that. I believe in doing everything in excellence. Let's do everything the very best that we're able to do. But just doing things well is not the backbone of a, a growing church or an impactful church, a church that's really bringing revolutionary change to people. These things have a way of attracting people and that's good, but there's got to be something deeper. Paul and Barnabas won a large number of people. How? Not through a program, not through excellence. I believe they probably handled themselves excellently. I believe they did things to the best that they knew how to do to honor God, but they, they saw great growth. A large number of people come to Christ because they preached the gospel. The way you grow a church, you introduce Jesus to a community. The way you see people's lives change, you introduce Jesus into their lives. We don't want people to just feel like they're part of something significant because they attend, because they got caught up in emotion. And emotion is not necessarily a bad thing because we're human and we get emotional and God moves and our emotions react to that. But we don't want people just to be be drawn because of an emotion, because they feel like, wow, I just feel the emotion in this place. And I love being here because it makes me feel a certain way. Or maybe because they like a particular style. That's just all superficial things. They're not bad things, but they're superficial things. We've got to be deeper than that as, a, as believers. We've got to be deeper than that as a church. Just as Jesus attracted lives to himself through genuine love and, and through genuine compassion, and through genuine involvement with people's lives, we can't rely on what temporary, temporary relief that we can bring on our own when we're outfitted with power and grace and love through the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. Why in the world would I want to try and just give some pat answers, some simple common sense, some worldly wisdom to somebody who is in a, a desperate time, in a difficult place, in their lostness, when, when my life is outfitted with the power and grace and love and hope and goodness of God. I've got something much richer, much deeper than just what I have in myself. I've got, I've got Jesus in me, the Holy Spirit in me. I'm packed with power. Let's use that. Paul and Barnabas brought new life to the lost in Derby. And that's just what people need to hear today. The lost people around you need to hear this message. They need to hear the gospel, the good news. It's the only good news and they need to hear it. But the passage goes on to say, they then return back to Lystra, Iconium and Antioch. And these are three places that if 
you go back and, and read through, we only took a couple of, of verses in each of those, but in each place they were run out. Remember the Jews followed them there and they stirred up trouble and, and basically they had to get out of town and run for their lives. Or in the case of Pisidian Antioch, they just dust off their feet and they moved off to Iconium and then Lystra and Derbe. So we know there's been great struggles where they've been. And look, the lost need somebody to encourage them, but so do the people of Christ. Our message is to the lost, but we need encouragement too. How many uh, of you realize that there's believers that just need encourage, eternal encouragement now today as well, that they're facing difficulties, that maybe they're a little depressed about what, what they're facing right now. Maybe they're feeling a little bit hopeless. And sometimes we as believers need encouragement now we might already know christ but sometimes we need reminded uh, of what we'll face in this life and then where it's all leading the good place that it's leading to the eternal place that it is leading paul and barnabas knew that if they had been run out of those towns they would probably have to go back and encourage those disciples because those disciples would be the ones that were left to face the battles Paul and Barnabas were there establishing churches and seeing lost lives saved and they were going from place to place but there were lives that you know somebody who got saved and they lived in Pisidian Antioch or they lived in Lystra or Iconium that was their their home they weren't just going to pack everything up and move they had to live out their faith in the midst of the hostility within that city within that town and continue to be an example and so they come back through those places that they've been thrown out so they could strengthen people so that they could bring some encouragement back to the believers because the believers were gonna need it. How many of you need encouragement? A lot, everyone, all of us, we need encouragement. And they came back to encourage them as well. Let's be honest, we're children of the living God and, and sometimes we think that we should have it easier. Just be honest, sometimes we think that we should, we should have it easier. We should have it better than others because we serve the living God. I mean, we should have better lives we should have bigger bank accounts. We should be driving nicer cars. We get caught up in that easily. We should have better because we serve God. That everything should work out for us because God is on our side. Every problem that we face, that it, God should alleviate it, that he should snap a finger and it should be done with because we're God's children. Every problem that we face, God should rectify and bring a solution quickly to it because we're the children of God. And, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills and he's all powerful and all knowing. He should just be able to take care of everything. Listen, who, what good parent who's listening to this right now, a good mom or dad realizes that it's not always good just to make things go away. That these difficulties that we face have a way of really shaping us into who we are today. Without even recognizing it, I think sometimes many may serve God merely for what God can do for them. Sometimes we think that God is here for us, like God was created for us, not the other way around. And we get it from our culture. Have you ever seen or heard about a kid who got upset on Christmas morning because their mom or dad didn't get them the specific gift that they wanted? They had all these other things. They had 20 other beautiful gifts, but because they didn't get this one thing, they threw a tantrum because they felt like they, they were owed it, like that's what they wanted. And mom and dad were, were there and they're meant to fulfill that need and bring joy to their life in that way. Have you ever, you've probably seen that. Ever see a child demanding that their parents, demanding their parents for something that they wanted and saying, I need this and I want this and I have to have it right now. In our culture today, we think parents or we act like parents serve their children when the Bible paints a completely different picture about the family. Of course, parents are here to love their kids and support their kids and, and also to supply for their needs. That's an obligation for us as parents. We would be bad parents if we didn't love our children and we didn't supply for their needs. That's our obligation as parents. When we decide to have children, we're going to take care of them. But when we look at the biblical point of view of a family, children were there to serve within their families. And so we have young girls as they're coming of age when they're growing up, uh, when they're five years old, let's say, they're old enough to start learning the rituals of the things that mom was doing around the house, how she was caring for things, how she would cook some of the favorite meals. They were, they were learning those skills because there was coming a day where they would be moms themselves, they would be wives themselves, and they had to learn these things, but they contributed to mom and dad. Boys were probably out in the fields learning how to 
take care of the herds or if dad had some kind of a trade like Jesus with Joseph. Joseph was a, a stonemason and so Jesus was as a, as a son of Joseph was learning those things. And so sons would be learning trades or they'd be learning to, to herd sheep or whatever else or cattle, whatever they, they needed to do in those times. They were learning skills for their future, but also to help serve within the family right now and help mom and dad. They served their purposes until they left the home. So let's adjust our thinking with God. And this is what Paul is, is addressing, proper thinking for believers within our purpose. Remain true to the faith. That's what he comes back encouraging them. Listen, things aren't necessarily gonna get better. He tells them, he tells them, you're gonna have to endure many hardships to enter into the kingdom. So he's telling them, remain true to the faith, not true to yourself, not true to your heart. Listen, if you start following those things where you're gonna be true to yourself and you're gonna start following your heart, you're gonna go into a ditch, a spiritual ditch. Paul is saying, stay true to the faith. Don't do anything which compromises your position with Jesus. You've given your heart and your life to him and he saved you, don't lose heart. Continue to serve him, continue to be faithful, continue in your salvation. Paul is encouraging them. Listen, and it is some things that we see him say in some of the epistles, to some of the churches, he's saying, listen, don't depart from what you accepted, from what you know to be true, the salvation that you've taken on. Don't add things to it. So this is this message, the beginnings of his message to those in the epistles. We're seeing, seeing it here into the, the three towns. Guys, stay true to the faith. Stay true to it. Remain true to it. And then he reminded him that they would face hardships. To enter the kingdom. Now that's probably not something that any of us want to hear is that we're going to have to face hardships to enter in the kingdom. No, it's telling us it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy because the world is inconsistent. Your good news today is overwhelmed by bad news tomorrow. You faced a struggle today or maybe you faced a struggle throughout this month or you faced maybe something a little bit longer than that. Maybe you've been facing something that seems like it's lasted a year. And then that's done. Well, you're going to face something else. That's how life is. We, we celebrate these little victories because they help encourage our faith. But don't put faith in those things because as soon as you're out of one thing, it seems like you're going into another. And that's just how life is. My hope cannot be in this world. If it is, then I, I'll begin to question does God love me? I mean, does, why does God even allow these circumstances to happen? That's the problem. The, the, the problem is that you live in a fallen world burdened under sin. The problem isn't that God isn't faithful, but when I put my hope in this world, I start to question the faithfulness of God because I want God to do things in this life and in this existence that, that God doesn't see necessary to be done. He actually sees the difficulty necessary to shape my life and construct my life so that I will be able to inherit an eternity that he has created especially for me. God cares so much more about eternity than today. It's not that he's abandoned me today, but he cares because he knows eternity will be forever. This life is temporary. In this life, I'm learning lessons that's refining me. And in the midst of it, then I'm having a testimony to strengthen others around me. See, the only thing that I can be sure of here is that this life will be consistently turbulent. It is. When one, one war ends, we can celebrate, but another begins. When one disease is cured, another emerges. When one storm is passed, it's just a matter of time until another storm blows through. Jesus said it, and Paul echoes it. In this life, you will have trouble, but Jesus adds, I have overcome the world. And because Jesus has overcome, so will we. But you have to keep the faith. You must keep the faith in your salvation and in Christ and know that the promises that God has spoken are true and that eternity is a surety. My message is Jesus Christ. That's the message I have. It's Jesus Christ, he's crucified, he's risen from the dead, he's the only pathway to eternal life. And that message, Paul is going back through these churches and telling them, he's encouraging them, because that message will be opposed. So you should expect that. You should not be awed by that when that happens or shocked by that 
when it happens, when somebody gets angry because of the message that you carry about Jesus Christ, you should expect that. Not everybody is going to accept your message. Not everybody wants to hear the truth in your life. Not everybody wants to be set free from bondages that they see as their right to choose. Some people are satisfied to be in bondage. They enjoy that bondage, that thing that's burdening their life. They have chosen it, they love it, or they've, been, they've, been, they've married themselves to it in a, in a way, and they don't want to be freed from it, and they will oppose you. Listen, just because the, the Lord is in our lives does not make our road easier but it does make it more predictable because I know that as I keep my faith, as I trust in him in every hardship to bring me to the other side, to refine my life, within those hardships to be shaping me to be more like Christ, that as I keep my eyes on him, focusing on what is ahead rather than what is immediate, I will enter into eternity with him. This I am sure of. This is where my hope lies. I am certain of these things because my hope is not in this life. My, not, my hope is not to have a better life. My hope is not to have peace all of my days. My hope is not to, to never face another difficulty. I don't have those kind of hopes because that's just not gonna happen. I will not find peace in this life from this world. I can find peace in Christ in this life, but peace will not come to me through this world. So my hope's not in this life, and my hope is not in, in better circumstances in this life. Do I want better circumstances? Do I want an easier life? Do I want a better life? Yes, I want those things, but my hope is not for those things because I, I've known after all the life that I've lived that that would be a waste of hope. But my hope is in the sure fact that I will be with him one day. I, my hope is in the fact that I'm walking with him now, but that I will have him one day. That one day I will experience ultimate peace. I will experience ultimate joy, ultimate love, ultimate assurance, ultimate security. It's things that I wish that I could have for now. I wish I could have them now in this life, but I know that it can only be found in that life. It can only be found in eternity. So I don't hope for those things here. I hope for those things there. We need to, as believers, encourage one another in this way. Not that tomorrow will be better. Hey, you're... you're your best life is ahead of you. You know, we can believe all those things. I believe that my better, there's better days ahead of me, that God's continuing to advance me. I believe all those things, but that's not where my hope is. My hope is in that Jesus died, rose from the dead, sits at the right hand of the Father. He's prepared a place for me. And one day when I shut my eyes here and my life is done, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come alive in eternity. I'm gonna transfer over into eternity. And I'm gonna be welcomed into eternity by my savior that i've been a good and faithful servant that's where my hope is it's not in this life my hope's not in the things that this world can offer but in the things that god guarantees so this is how we encourage one another with the hope of eternal things not temporary things but eternal things that's just what each of us needs to hear and maybe that's what you needed to hear tonight for you. Maybe you're facing some things that are just difficult right now. And I pray that this is exactly what you needed to hear. That you need to stop placing your hope in this life and expecting everything to be better in this life. It will not be. But Jesus is walking with you. And as he is walking with you, you should remember that you have an incredible hope in Christ for eternity. That that's where your hope lies. That your hope is in the promises of God. The, eternal promises of life uh, uh, for your life because eternity will be forever. This life is only for a moment, a speck of dust in time, but eternity will be forever. I wanna encourage you that no matter what you're facing today, you should lift up your head and turn to your Lord and trust in him, pray to him often, cast your cares upon him, lay your burdens at the cross and trust in him today and believe on him today that when you get discouraged that you can put your hope in something sure not just something temporary that will not last but something sure something eternal and say lord it might not be easy now but i put my hope in you i know that one day things will be different when i'm with you it might not be today it might not be better today but there is coming a day and that day will be an eternity. I just wanna pray with you and believe for you today that if you're struggling, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling a little confused yourself, if you need a little bit of encouragement, 
that right now as you walk away from this video today, that you would walk away encouraged and just realize, you know, not everything in this life is going to work out like I wanted it to. But praise God, His plan will always work out. I want to pray with you tonight. Father, I thank you for each and every one that's watched, each and every one that's engaged with us. I pray, Lord, that you would bring life and hope to each one tonight. Father, let us realize that our hope is not in the things of this life. It's not in a better life. It's not in a easier life, a more peaceful life. But God, tonight, our hope is in you. Our hope is in your promise. Our hope is in our salvation. Our hope is in eternity. And God, these are, these are all things that will last forever. Father, let us put our hope in a place that is everlasting. And so, Lord, we look forward to your kingdom. God, even though right now we might be brokenhearted, maybe we're facing some difficulty, we feel stressed and strained. Lord, maybe a brother or sister right now is listening and they're, they're depressed and they're hurting. Or Father, they're fighting doubt. God, I, pr I pray right now that you would just bring assurance and that, Father, that they would be lifted up, encouraged to know that your promises are true and that, Father, that they can look ahead into the, the not so distant future, that they will be with you soon. Lord, we will all be with you soon. This life is just a breath. We will be with you soon. And we will enjoy all the things that we hope for in this life, but could not attain, but could only be attained in your kingdom and with you in your presence. Father, we thank you for love now. We thank you for your joy now. We thank you for your peace now that passes all understanding. We have all those things, but God, we will know them in such a, a superior way when we're with you. And we look forward to that. And all this we pray in your name. Amen. God is good. He's always faithful, right? I believe it. I hope you believe it. I hope to see you here at church on Sunday at 1030 in the morning. We'll be so excited to host you. If you are not able to make it, we will be live. We had a couple problems last week. We feel like we've gotten uh, those sorted with our carrier this week, some things that we had problems with. And so hopefully we'll be able to stream that whole service in, in one clip. We had problems if you tried to to view us last week, but this week we're hoping all things are going to be better and working out. Join us, worship with us, be encouraged in God's word with us. Be here Sunday and uh, it's going to be a great day. God bless you. Have a great end of the week. Love you all. We're praying for you.